for those who stayed. Yes. Thanks for hanging on. We go to Goodex or a variation of it. Good examples, but not with the sketch engine. Let's see a German variety, right? Presented by Alexander and Ull. Yeah, I think we'll just proceed. Yes. Should work now? Oh yeah. I think it's okay. Okay, so thank you for being here. And um, the two persons, um, I'm Alexander Geiken, Ulf is behind me. And we present, um, well, what, uh, what we have, the work we have done. Of course, it might sound a little bit bold to rediscover Codex 15 years after. Uh, the idea was, in fact, not to rediscover Codex, but we have a special um, problem at our project that I will present you first so that you understand why we co continue to do these things 15 years after. <laughs> Um, so the outline is as follows. I will do the introduction and um, some motivation about the example variation. And um, then Ulf will hand over um, and talk about the adopted solution. Um, he will um, show the technical details about this, uh, the training of the scoring model, which is roughly equivalent to what you can have in the codex. And, um, then we will have either an offline demo or an online demo, depending on the time that is left. Okay, so the background is about the DWDS, which stands for Digitales Wörterbuch der Deutschen Sprache, Digital Dictionary of the German Language. And um, it is now a one-stop dictionary for contemporary uh, German. Uh, that means that we offer all information about the German vocabulary, uh, including spelling, grammar, etymology, uh, meaning information, including definition, and most importantly, corpus examples, because this is what um, we stand for, that means empirically sound. And also you have a thesaurus information uh, in, um, at another component. The, um, uh, so we have, to a large extent, legacy dictionary resources um, that we have to recompile uh, because they are outdated. Some of them are between um, b um, compiled between 1960 and the 70s, and the other one, this is the VDG, and the other one, the Duden 99, is the 99 version. So this is the last printed version of the Duden, the 10 volume version. And we have both put together into our dictionary database. And um, uh, so for the former one, for the VDG, we have outdated examples. And for the latter one, we are not even allowed to present the examples for copyright reasons. So we have to replace all these things. Um, on the other hand, we have a large corpus base of 50 billion tokens. Um, the link, you can see it here. And um, also the references of the two dictionaries uh, with the dates are here. And that's how it looked li look like, the, um, an entry. Um, I will take it afterwards as an example. Uh, so you have the German word die Hürde, which mean, can either mean hurdle or in a, metaf uh, a metaphorical sense, the obstacle if it's not literal. And um, so the typical, it's not necessary to be able to read everything here, but the idea is we have here information about form and grammar. Here you have meaning information and uh, below, um, so this is just the, the, the overview. And here you have the sense information with examples and so on. And uh, if you could read it better, you would see that these examples are outdated, handmade and so on. So we have to replace it for about um, 150,000 entries. Um, the starting point, of course, is Goodex. So there's no way I think uh, you can come around Goodex. Um, um, so this was really um, 15 years ago. Uh, but we have also additional ideas to Goodex that came from our, uh, the, the, the feedback from our lexicographers. And uh, one of the feedbacks were that it is nice to have good examples, but it would even be nicer to find a good variety of examples in order to cover the different meaning aspects of a given word. 
And um, in addition, we did also some experiments, uh, not with rule-based um, factors like the number of uh, the length, the sentence length, the number of pronouns, the number of named entities, and so on. Uh, but we have an individualized model training by by an active learning learning approach. So both aspects um, were dealt with in a joint initiative between our institute, which is the Berlin-Brandenburg Academy of Sciences, and the Technical University of Darmstadt. Um, oh, so, so I think, yeah. Um, so the, the analysis is clear. You can have good examples, but they could be duplicates. In many cases, you deduplicate the content and you won't have this problem. But you have other problems that is that your best examples might be all from only one meaning, one and only meaning. So you might talk about only one e event or about one linguistic concept and so on. That means a very similar semantics. Or it might be that they have all a very simple syntax or a, a very similar syntax. Or, and the third problem is that they might share the best examples, might share the same metadata. Like, for example, they stem from the same author, from the same book editions, time spans, and so on. And um, so this is, um, well, the causes for it, that is this, a system like, like Goodex or uh, any uh, system that is dealing only with the scores, um, well, doesn't care about the variation in, uh, with respect to these three criteria. That means semantics, syntax, and uh, metadata. And, um, okay, so this is an um, example for duplicates and so on, but I think this is uh, something everybody knows very well here. So I will hand over to the solution. So how did we um, find or let's say develop a solution to these two problems, that is variation, and secondly, to the model training. And I will hand over to Ulf. Hello. Um, a desirable curation of multiple sentence example um, should be um, that these example have um, are mutual exclusive. For example, they have different meanings, maybe they are uh, different grammar or other criteria, but so they are disjunct um, in a sense. However, in total, all examples together that are collected should be collectively exhaustive. So the union of these examples should represent ideally like the, um, the full spectrum. Um, how can we model this like uh, in an algorithm? Attention, now we have math. So we will use, um, we can um, model it as an optimization problem. So um, first we can use something like good, good, good X and the target would be to maximize the total goodness by solving for W. Minus, minimization is maximization. However, at the same time, we want to minimize the similarity between the examples. Let's take um, one abstract example. Let's say uh, we have a uh, uh, sentence example one and two, and they have kind of the same goodness score. They are, we um, retrieve them from the database and they have a really high score in GEDEX, for example, like 0 0.9 or something. Um, re really good. Uh, in, yeah, okay. However, when we calculate the similarities um, along n examples, it could be that the first example has like really low similarities to all the 99 other examples. Like the similarity score could be if it's between one, uh, uh, 0 and 1, it's something like 0.1 or something. But the second example has like a really high similarity to a large majority of the n examples. What we would do in this algorithm would be we would penalize the second example so that the the weighting, uh, uh, the result as a weighting would be uh, as the result of the optimization problem would be for higher for the the weighting would be higher for the first example and lower for the second example. This is what this formula would do, and then. Uh, User interface, it would be, would look like this. We have like 
um, we would compute similarities, for example, semantic similarities based on SBIRT or the syntactic similarities. So there's also a project I can talk about this later. And we can weigh these similarities, add them together, and solve the problem. And this is what the users would do. They would say, oh, um, they, they might um, first um, only consider the goodness scores, and then they f f um, might see like results, oh, okay, the, the t my top 10 scores, what I see on the display, oh, they have all the same meaning. Then they could say, oh, let's penalize semantic similar sentence examples in the way I explained before with the what, um, sentence example one and two. And then sim um, the other, um, it would um, generate a solution for W with a new ordering so that at the top, more uh, diverse, uh, um, like an uh, example with a different semantic uh, meaning would show up at the top. Is this, does, okay, I will proceed. Um, there's a technical detail. Um, optimi numerical optimization problems were really popular from the 60s to, I would say, 2000s. Um, however, these algorithms have, um, have a complexity problem. The n, the number of examples I can put into, it's really low. For, for, because um, if I want to have quick results, like within milliseconds, like what the user expects, or like even within a second or something. Um, like on a normal computer, if I put like 50 or something, it will take like 20 seconds or something. It is really slow for, for um, these, uh, if you use like traditional algorithms. Um, with all these buzz about um, neural networks and deep learning, there was also another innovation that most people don't talk about. Uh, we got reverse automatic dif differentiation software. So the optimization problem here, we can rewrite it as a loss function and approximate it with modern software, which is much faster because the complexity of these algorithms is lower. So we can um, use like a higher number of sentence examples to solve this problem. So if somebody's interested in talking about this, we can talk about this later. So, where do the similarity, uh, the similarity metrics are pre-computed? So, where do these come from? The semantic similarity, this means here, the representation vectors from an S-BIRT model. This is like a sentence bird model. We don't train it, we just use it. All the similarity metrics are computed with off-the-shelf um, algorithms that are pre-trained. Um, in case of semantic similarities, we use, um, um, we compute the dependency grammar, uh, decompose the tree, and use a software called MinHash. Uh, MinHash is, um, uh, is a software that you also use for near duplicate detections. Uh, um, in case the near duplicate detection we are using for for obviously near duplicates and um, bibliographic information. The goodness score. Um, in our case, we implemented an interactive learning model. Um, I will talk about this in the next chapter. However, um, the algorithm with the optimization problem, you can use any scoring model you want. You could also use GEDEX or invent your own scoring model. So in the next chapter, I will talk a little bit about um, our interactive learning mo model really briefly. Um, it has some interesting feature. We are using something called best worst scaling um, to collect a lot of data with a very few clicks. This is um, one of the aspects and the model is trained within the user interface, like in, in your app directly. Um, we try to prevent like a, how to say, a, a data protection problem. So usually um, when you train um, like these kind of models, 
usually um, the results of the best worst scaling, like the data collect, the collected data or the annotated data will be sent to a, a central server. And this could be a problem with data protection. And we can circumvent this because the people just train the model in their client directly. It's like a side effect. So let's go to interactive learning. So um, this is a brief overview. So like in the first step, the user, user will see like a few examples, maybe 10 examples, so not so many. Then an already pre-trained model or the model from the previous step will be, uh, will be retrained. And then we apply, uh, then we predict model scores on unlabeled sentences. So we predict, in this case, we predict like model scores. These model scores we can use uh, to uh, sample from a bigger collection, like, um, oh, okay. And, and then we resample and we start it over again. Okay. The best worst scaling model. This might be interesting for um, if you want to collect a pairwise comparison. So, and um, best worst scaling works. We first select the worst example we see on the display and the best example. So, from there we can derive pairwise comparisons because we know when we select the best example, the best example is better than all or, or three of them. Then we can increment the in the result matrix, even though we didn't explicitly evaluate these. So, um, in case with four items, we can uh, create with two clicks five pair comp uh, five uh, paired comparisons, and in this way we, you can collect uh, collect a lot of training data with only a few clicks. Okay, now we proceed to the demo. Four minutes? Okay. So I'm, I think it's too risky to do it online, but I can at least click <laughs> to see how the, how the principles work. So this is work in progress, definitely. It is working, but it is not yet uh, tested uh, in, intensively. So the idea is you have a set of f three, four or five cards and you rate the worst one and you rate the best one. So first the, uh, the worst one. And um, uh, so normally sh I should read it for a minute because I didn't see the examples before. It was the surprise of my colleague. And um, um, so they are all quite quite okay. So I take this as the, the um, uh, worst and best one. And um, so I would do this for, um, no, so, sorry. Yeah, and I think a third one I have to do, and then there will be something, yes, you see on the right side, there's something, the training, and, um, okay, and I will do it a third one, and I should have, now this is, I recall this, this uh, set of three sequences is a cycle, and you should have um, the loss function, which normally should diminish, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that's um, so. This is the first way. Uh, so the idea is to have um, not to rate all the sentences, but only the best and the worst. And you, the more you have in between, you, you know, you're fishing, so to say, those. And um, then the second um, way is how do I get there? Hmm? Up, yeah, yeah. And so I want the I want the variation yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, but I want, okay. So again, yes, the, the, we had the problem to, for the umlaut <laughs> on this keyboard. So the idea is, so it's now loading, and uh, the idea is according to this optimization matrix uh, Ulf has shown, we can, um, we can, we have now the, um, depending on the options, um, either the emphasis on semantic, semantically different uh, sentences 
or on the goodness or on different metadata. So this is the idea. I think there's not the time to discuss the details. Um, do you have them, the, this, how do I get um, the menu for this? Preferences. Okay, so that's what um, uh, what Ulf has shown uh, previously. So the semantics, um, if I put it here or there, it would change the results and vice versa um, for the... So you, you would get different results according to the semantics and uh, the same is true for the other two, uh, three, uh, two dimensions. So you have these three dimensions in total, syntax, semantic and uh, the metadata. I think that's all for the moment. Uh, future work will be well to test it to see if, it's, uh, if it scales and um, then hopefully we can um, provide you with some encouraging results how to detect um, in a solid way the variation or to cover the variation of examples in in a corpora. Thank you very much. Thank you to both of you. Questions, comments, feedback, suggestions to do even better. <laughs> yes, we have. Ah. Sorry, um, one of my issues with GoodX has always been good for what? You know, like different use cases will be different, have a different purpose. I'm wondering maybe is there something I'm just missing that like all lexicographers know something about what is a good example and it's for lexicography? Because I can imagine that a good example for a learner, for example, mm -hmm. would be different or could be different. Okay, I think I will answer this question. Oh, yeah. uh, there was in 2016, as far as I remember, the same, almost the same discussion was in Vienna. And uh, the same question, the answer was um, from the software perspective, uh, Goodex can be regarded as solved. But from the lexicographer's perspective, there are so many use cases for learners, for specialized dictionaries, for large monolingual dictionaries, for those who are um, very good speakers of, of their language and for those who are perhaps less ambitious. And uh, that's why GoodX, you can, well, adapt it. You have so many parameters to play with. For example, the length is one of the best predictor. And uh, of course, with our training model, you can also um, have one model where you say it's, it's better for language learners and another one which is perhaps better for experts, like for example, well, complex words, you can, cannot use them. So you have skipped all the examples where the morphology is too complex or where the words are too complex. So that's basically the idea which is not different in our perspective than from GoodX. And uh, perhaps one last thing, our lexicographers, they l love a, a working feature of GoodX because they consider to become more productive if they use it. Because otherwise you have to go through examples and examples and examples and uh, it helps you to filter out those who are definitely not very good. Yeah. And there are a lot of them if you inspect corpora. <laughs> Are you satisfied with this answer? <laughs> yeah. So it was not a question about why do we need real examples and then have a tool to select the best from that. No, no. no. You're convinced that we need real language. Of course. Okay, because otherwise, just look at what ChatGPT offers as examples to see, <laughs> to see what not to do. That's the past. Eh? <laughs> so we definitely need a tool with good parameters. So, more questions, feedback. <laughs> Can users use this now as yes. is and play with the parameters? So, so um, uh, URL, uh, yes, the address. And um, also when I log out, I log in again. So, if so you it's evidence.bbaw.de. Yes, and let me show. You can also use the Google sign in button if you like, um, but you don't. Uh, you are not tracked. We don't have tracking for this big corporation, <laughs> only as an authentication <laughs> method, if you want. And um, if you want a new um, account, you click on register, sign up, and... Um, oh. yeah. And we have three languages, English, French, and German, yeah. for the interaction. Not for the corporate right now, it's only in German. 
So given I'm not a sketch engine user, I'm not also a Gudex <laughs> user. So in the sketch engine, you know, the, the audience may know, you don't have these parameters. Can you choose length? Can you choose, I, I focus on syntax, I focus on complexity of the sentence, the words. The, is it available? I, no, that's what, I'm it, not a perfect expert Does someone of, know uh, of the sketch people uh, left? Does someone, why did you have to do it? Why did you have so, to implement it? Because it's not there. At yeah. the moment where we started this, uh, I'm quite sure that it, at least it was not publicly available and it might be to, at today, but we started, well, some time ago. But as far as I know, it is not available. Okay, and then you, you talked about the limit. Once it goes beyond 25 sentences to work from, it takes too long. So what's the prospect? What will you do? Because 25 examples is nothing. It's just a screen full. You want it to analyze thousands of example sentences. So Yes, uh, they are different there. For these old al al algorithms, uh, they are not good <laughs> to implement. We didn't implement this algorithm directly. We implemented this one. We used a different <laughs> modern software mm -hmm. where we can use them bigger number of uh, sentences, for example. Yes. But you can take it also a step further to mm. improve it. And if the uh, sketch engine is interested, they can mm. just copy yeah. the code and it's open yeah. source. But perhaps yeah. we should yes, add, but... they come from the mathematics department. Yeah. They're just <laughs> showing off, okay? So <laughs> that's just their thing. Okay, so the code is there, the maths are there, we can all re uh, reuse I, it. I, I st but you have a, still a point, Gilles Maurice. Uh, there's uh, the, the the scaling, and what you would like as a as a linguist or lexicographer is to see hundreds of examples. This is not yet fully solved, so that's that's we have to find crunching methods still, and um, so that's why we didn't make. Well, we call it work in progress, promising, but um, well, the final results are still to wait. <laughs> um, can add a little bit. The bottleneck is only to compute. The bottleneck is to compute the similarity metric that are the inputs of this algorithm. So you could pre-compute it. In our case, we implemented that's computed on the fly. But if you pre-compute it, it could be faster. So. so this is Thanks again. Hmm. Time is up. <laughs>